So the San Francisco 49ers have had a pretty great first start to the season. I mean, you know, game one was kind of sloppy against Tampa Bay. However, this game against Cincinnati, they really dominated from start to finish. I mean, the score was close in the first half, but really their offense was just rolling all night and they were really able to outlast the Cincinnati Bengals defense and have a really promising game. And a lot of that was through the running game. And also, you will notice this video is not in all 22 footage if you just have missed my other videos on Mondays. On Mondays, the all 22 footage isn't out yet, so the videos that I'll make will not be with all 22 footage. But don't worry, the rest of the week will have all 22 footage in the videos. So anyways, let's just jump into it and we'll start things off with this play. The way it's going to work for the offensive line is there's actually going to be four one-on-one -on -one matchups. The only guy who isn't going to be blocking someone on the defensive line is going to be the right guard who's going to move up to the second level to block that linebacker right over there. So then for San Francisco, they can just have a receiver run out to block that defensive player over there, but there's still going to be one more Cincinnati Bengal who's in the area. So to make sure that he's getting blocked as well, they're going to pull Kittle up to the top half of the screen and and he will be the last guy to make a block in that area. Because then, Brita's going to try to run up to the top half of the screen, and if everyone makes their blocks well, albeit some of these blocks are kind of difficult to make, but if everyone can make their blocks, this could be potentially a big run. And after the ball is snapped, one thing you'll notice is that a Bengal actually sniffs this one out pretty well. I mean, as you see, he's doing a great job of trying to run up to the line, he kind of times the snap to a degree, and he's very close to trying to make this play. Kittle's doing his best to try to block him out of the way, but just sometimes when you have to move over to make a block, if someone can realize what's going on and just outrun you, it's really tough to be able to make that block. There's not a lot Kittle can do here, albeit he is going to be able to finish this block off. He's going to make sure that Breida at least doesn't get tackled for a loss, but now Breida's just kind of in a more difficult situation. I mean, as you see, he gets to the line of scrimmage, but now there's another Bengal who's in this area, and in theory, regardless of which direction Breida's going to run to, this would be a bad play. I mean, not a disastrous play, but you would think that this is the kind of play that's only going to go for a couple of yards if that defensive player can make a tackle. But one thing you're going to see Breeder do is fake as though he's going to the left, but then run to the right, and that allows him to pick up a lot more yards, because once Breeder faked as though he was going to the bottom half of the screen, that made Kirkpatrick think that he was going to go to the bottom half of the screen. Breeder was able to run to the top half of the screen and pick up a lot more yards than he would have had he just picked a direction. So that's definitely a little thing. That's a small little detail right there on that play, but it mattered in a big way. You know, that's kind of why I always say, oftentimes a running back job isn't just to get the yards that are given to you, but sometimes try to get as many yards as possible. That play already already gave him a couple of yards just by the blocking, but he was able to do more than that and turn it into a big play. I thought the 49ers did a pretty good job of blocking throughout the game. I mean, like on this one, the center and right guard are each going to double team the Cincinnati Bengal who's right over there, and then the right tackle will just have a one-on-one matchup with that Bengal over there. And also what San Francisco is going to do is they're going to actually pull two players over. It's going to be the left guard who's going to pull over in between those two guys and also the tight end. And so this is a play that's actually going to take a little bit of time to develop because you have to wait for the guard and a tight end to get in between where you're trying to run through before you can run through there. So you actually can't just full on sprint on this play. You have to be patient and you have to let your blockers do the rest of the work there. That's what you have to do if you are Brita. There's clearly a gap in front of him that he can make this run through, but again, he doesn't want to just full-on sprint there, because then he'll only gain two or three yards. He instead waits a little bit, and then runs through, and that's that we're able to pick up seven yards. It's, it's not a huge thing, but it is something. You know, that might have only changed two or three yards, but those things absolutely add up over the course of a game. I mean, would you rather have a second down and eight, or a second down and three or four? Of course, the second down and three is a much better situation, because now you can really take a shot deep with a second down, you can try to just get the first down immediately, you can open up the playbook essentially. Whereas on a second down and eight, it kind of closes things up a little bit. I mean, you can still go a short pass there, but if you do want to take a shot deep, then it would create a third down situation where you can't go short pass, and that kind of complicates things. So just a few runs in a play like that, it might not seem like it much, but it, it really does make a big impact throughout the course of a game. There was also this play, which was probably Breida's best play of the game. It's a third down and one, and so San Francisco, they're not going to do anything too fancy here. They're just going to try to run it up the middle, see if they can pick up the yard. That's the way this play is supposed to work. However, one problem is going to happen right when this ball is snapped. If you take a look, Geno Atkins is doing what Geno Atkins does, and he has pushed the line of scrimmage almost two yards back. I mean, he did a great job on this play. Breda wants to try to run it towards his direction, however, at this point, it would be a terrible decision to still try to fit it through a hole that he was initially trying to fit it through. If there was this contact right at the line of skirmish, well, then it wouldn't be the end of the world. You could still just run forward and just fall over them for the first down. But when it's this far back, you really can't be doing this here. You kind of have to try to look for something else. But luckily for Breda, there is something else open. If you look at the bottom half of the screen, there's really only one Cincinnati Bengal who could make a play if he does break it to the bottom half of the screen. It would be that player right there. So that's what Breed is going to do. He's going to break to the bottom half of the screen, and now is really the key point of this play. 
you'd see a lot of halfbacks sort of just dive forward at this point. He's going up against a defensive back, so he doesn't have too much to worry about. Just, you know, accept the fact that you're going to take a hit, but dive forward, pick up the first down. That's all you really have to do. But Brita has other ideas. Look at this move he's going to pull off, and then he's even able to break up to the top half of the screen, and he picks up a huge gain on what was already a good play because he got the first down just by getting the third down and one. He kind of gambled there, you know? If he cut back to the inside and the defensive back played it perfectly and made a tackle right at the line, and then he doesn't get the first down there. But he knew the chances of that happening were small. He trusted himself that he could get around him, and he, for good reason, I mean, Breda's a good player. He made a very good play there and was able to pick up a huge gain along with the first down. I also thought he showed off his good acceleration in that game. Like on this play, it's going to actually be a passing play where it's going to be a screen pass. He's lined up as a receiver right now, but Garoppolo is going to hit him right over there. And then what they're going to do is have a receiver and left tackle both go out the block. Those two Bengals who are in the area, and then Breda just runs as fast as he can, tries to pick up as many yards as possible. Nothing too fancy. However, one thing that happens right when this ball is snapped is that a defensive lineman is actually going to do a pretty good job of reading this ball and trying to get in Breida's way. I mean, he's still kind of parallel with Breida, so you would expect Breida to still be able to outrun him, but now Breida's in a little bit of trouble. Because typically, you kind of want to wait a little second and let your blockers really get as good of blocks as possible. But now he doesn't have that luxury since a defensive lineman is kind of right in his face here. He's going to have to run as fast as he can, and he'll also have to probably change directions while running at a top speed, which is not easy to do. A lot of guys can't do things like that but he is going to be able to outrun everybody and pick up the first down. Just a just a good play by Breida there, you know? Nothing crazy, nothing game-changing, but a very good play. I also do feel like it really helps Breida in a lot of ways just to play for 49ers and play for a Kyle Shanahan offense. It seems like no matter which Shanahan it is, whether it's Mike Shanahan or Kyle Shanahan, they always just seem to have running backs be able to have a wide-open gap to try to run through. It's how Mike Shanahan won Super Bowls and how Kyle Shanahan has gone to a Super Bowl and has had some success with the 49ers. It's by plays like that. But like if you take a look at this play, so on the left side of the offensive line, it's going to be pretty standard, not anything too, too fancy. You're going to have the left tackle and center both move up the block two linebackers and then the left guard will block that Cincinnati interior lineman. Because then what you're going to do is have your receiver on the bottom half of the screen sort of fake as though he's running a route at first, but then he'll block that bangle who's in the area and that could kind of do two things. The first, of course, is just blocking a linebacker which is always good, but also if he fakes that he is running a route well enough, this can now mean that the defensive player who's supposed to be covering that receiver will also move up to the top half of the screen. He'll try to make sure he's keeping pace, but that could kind of create a block, but also force him out of position. So you're getting rid of one bangle, but also getting another bangle out of position. So it's kind of killing, not really killing two birds with one stone, but it's killing a bird and then injuring a bird with one stone. That's kind of the way it's working. And they'll also have Kittle go over, and usually you expect him to block that edge rusher right over there. And then for Breda, just to allow for this play to develop fully, he's going to fake as though he's going to the middle of the screen, but then run out to the bottom half of the screen. And Garoppolo will even fake as though he's giving a handoff to the top half of the screen, but then it will be a handoff to the bottom half of the screen. And so after this ball is snapped, as you see, Kittle is in position where he could block that Cincinnati edge rusher. However, that is not what he's going to do. Kyle Shanahan trusts that Breida can get around an edge rusher, and that's what's going to happen. I mean, as you see, Kittle is able to move up to the second level and then block the defensive player who was out of position due to that play I showed you earlier. And then since Breida has that acceleration, he was able to pick up the first down on that play. So, you know, good team play and also just a good play call by Shanahan. It just all worked out very well. So that was a well-blocked play. But even when plays weren't blocked too well, that was where Breida was also able to shine. Like on this one, the way it's going to work is that there's going to be a tight end who goes up to block that bangle right over there. And also a fullback to block the other linebacker. So, you know, those are two key blocks on this play. However, something is going to happen right when this ball is snapped. A Cincinnati Bengal is doing a great job of winning his own one-on-one -on -one matchup, and now for San Francisco, you're in a little bit of trouble here. So now it's kind of decision time if you're a fullback here, because you kind of have two options. You could just do what you're supposed to do, move up to the second level to block a linebacker, but if you do that, that could then allow for that Cincinnati Bengal to make a tackle for a loss. I mean, moving up to the second level isn't that big of a deal when you can't even get past the first level. And so he's not going to do that. He's just going to make sure that that edge rusher doesn't beat him. He's going to essentially just double-team the edge rusher and leave the guy who he was supposed to block unblocked, but that's still a better situation than getting a tackle for a loss. And so because of that, now Bengal is going to be in a pretty good situation where he could potentially make a tackle right here. So this is kind of what I mean when I say a halfback's job isn't to get a huge gain on every play. A halfback's job is to gain as many yards as possible past what the offensive line already gave you. And in this situation, the offensive line didn't give him much. 
I mean, he's in trouble here before the line of scrimmage. However, he has enough acceleration, he's going to break to the bottom half of the screen, and he has good enough footwork he's able to cut back and stay in bounds and still pick up a solid game. That's really just such a blessing if you are the San Francisco 49ers, because you are already run block well, and you also have a head coach that can really help your running game work very well. But if you also have a good running back, I mean, that just creates such a frustrating situation for opposing defenses. One last play I want to talk about is this one, where what's going to happen is that the center and left tackle will each have one-on-one matchups with those two Bengals right there, and actually the guard is going to move up to block that linebacker over there. And so with no fullback in the game on this one, this is now all up to Breda. He's going to have to get through that gap as quick as possible. Of course, you know, how well they run block is going to be key here, but also he's going to have to get through it very quickly, because even if they run block great on this one, the gap still isn't going to be open for forever. He's going to have to shoot through it pretty quickly. But watch how he shoots to the bottom half of the screen, and the second he sees that he has an opening, he runs right through it and picks up a solid gain. And if you notice in that situation, that was second down and 14 there. So that's definitely an interesting decision there to run the ball on second down and 14. A lot of head coaches wouldn't do something like that because they want to pass the ball, try to make it a short third down and three maybe, and then try to get the first down. But Shanahan did that for a couple of reasons. One, he just wanted to make sure they're in field goal range, and he did want to make it a more achievable third down, but also he trusts that Matt Breda and that offensive line can create an opening that he can pick up a solid game and make for an easier third down. And some of you might be saying, well, they were also up 21, and maybe he was just being a bit cautious, but trust me, after Super Bowl 51, there's no way Kyle Shanahan is going to be cautious about a 20-plus point lead with late in the third quarter. No chance. He's going to make sure that he plays these ones out. It's a call that a lot of coaches shouldn't do, and a lot of coaches, depending on the personnel, shouldn't do. However, Kyle Shanahan trusts his personnel, and for good reason. So I think this is a good team. I definitely think this could be a playoff team. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.